Sam, are we recording, sir? We are. Yeah. Ah, cool. Cool, cool. All right, guys, how are you? How's everything going all right? Welcome back to, to our, um, our sixth episode here of our educational series. We're going to focus today continuously on one-on-ones. Um, we have Tony Elliott is back. Tony, hello. Oh, uh, mate, how are you? Again. Great to see everybody. My apologies for last week. I was a little bit under the weather, not feeling too good, but I'm uh, got a spring back in my step now, so I'm raring to go. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I think let's um, let's start here, Sammy. If you could just share the screen with the PowerPoint presentation, please. Yeah, Tony's on that. You got me. Tony, there you go. You shifted it over. Yep. Right, everybody got it. Yeah, and guys, while Tony's presenting, if you could just put your phones on mute, that would be very appreciated. Right, okay. So, guys, great to see everybody, and, and a, a big well done and a thank you uh, last week to Eric, Sam, and, and the other guys for sort of uh, grabbing hold of the baton and taking her on for us. So, uh, a great job. I've managed to watch it on the, on YouTube, so I've got a good view of, of everything that was going on. Um, so well done for that and some some fantastic input from you you goalkeepers as well so that was that was great to see and um, you know feel me full of joy so uh, got me through that that couple of days that I wasn't feeling too good um, yeah as Eric said we're going to continue uh, our theme we're dealing with one-on-ones and through balls um, so I think what what um, the discussions that I found that I listened to towards the the back end of the the presentation was quite topical and I know Sam um, was talking about a couple of situations that, that happened in the um, Arsenal Man City game, and now Eric touched on one of them as well. Um, but before we have a look at that, what we think we wanted to just sort of finalise and go over, I think this is where Eric, everybody got to last week. That's um, correct. We ended with a discussion around key factors. Yeah. So what we what we tried to do was to look at, you know, what are the base key factors when the goalkeeper is having to sort of think about and deal with a through ball or a 1v1. Uh, and again, you know, I think the breakout rooms um, proved a great worth during the process. Um, I got to see one or two bits of that and some real good conversations, some real good good pointers from, from you guys. And what we put on here uh, was just sort of an idea of what may be some of the key factors that the goalkeeper has to think about and deal with. Uh, when dealing with a 1v1 on a through ball. So just, Eric, coaches, you guys, anything that stood out from you in terms of this slide when you finish or anything from the keepers that you want to just go over before we move on into the next part of this evening's webinar, this afternoon's webinar? Sam, Steve, Sam, anything you guys would like to add? Yeah, I just think the, the, the decision-making was the main thing we sort of focused on. Um, Obviously, all the things that can lead to your decision. So maybe a few triggers from the opposition, whether it's a through ball, whether it's a bad touch, whether they lift their head up to look for a, a long pass. Any little triggers you can you can put in your favour as such um, that can can benefit benefit the outcome uh, and get the get the um, decision you want you want to make um, the correct one. Okay, so that's not just working on the, the technical side either, Sam, was it? I'm thinking about just briefly there, touching yeah. on our five elements of development. Very yeah. much a psychological situation and the tactical influence that we would suggest yeah, in yeah. terms of what's going on in the game, the context of the game, you know, the goalkeeper's perception and awareness of what's happening around them. Um, mm -hmm. And that all affects, you know, the decision-making process for them in these moments, doesn't it? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Okay, brilliant. So I think what we, because we've got a lot to cram in again tonight, folks. So fasten your seat belts. We've got a lot to do. Again, with the footage, um, there's no guarantee that it's going to flow smoothly. Um, so it might be that you, you try and grab as much detail from it as you can. Um, and then obviously we'll send you the files so that you can have a look at them in real time and get a, a real taste and flavour for them. So I think um, what we've also talked about, Eric, is not just... Um, yourself and myself um, leading all the time on these presentations. We want to try and get the other coaches, Sam, Steve, and the other Sam uh, involved at times, and obviously Mark when he's with us. In, in other words, getting their points of view across as well and sharing some of these presentations. I think that's what we've discussed, yes, haven't we? Yeah? 
Okay, so what we're going to do here, guys, Sam, I think you've um, you've uh, took the responsibility now. You you shared this with me and asked me to clip these together for you. So mm -hmm. what we're going to look at, guys, is two situations from the recent game um, in the EPL between Man City and Arsenal. The first one is a situation where um, Edison deals with a long ball over the top from Leno, as you can see here, and he's defending the space. And then we'll, we'll talk about that and then we'll go on to the next clip, which is um, about Leno in terms of um, defending the area and then conceding the goal, having made a decision that he did. So let's have a look at the, the, the footage and then we'll, we'll work off you, Sam, OK? Yeah. yeah. OK, I'll put it back on again, Sam, yep. so we can just have another look. A long ball over the top, defenders and attackers trying to get first contact on the ball. But as you can see, there's only one winner of that ball in that situation. So go ahead, Sam, it's all yours, mate. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, guys, the things we want to try and, try and focus on with this situation is, obviously, we spoke about defending the goal, defending the area and the space. Um, so obviously this one here is outside the box, so it would be the space he's defending. Um, just want to get you guys to think about the, the five elements of the development again, because um, there's a fair few involved in this. Um, so as you see, that long ball come over, comes through. Unfortunately, he does hit his own defender. And as we touched on last week, the defender he's playing with isn't as such a regular starter for the team. So he might find that the communication element's not there. Um, there might not have been a shout. We, ne we don't know. Um, the defender's obviously backpedalling towards the goal, not looking at where the keeper is. He's got his back to the ball, really. He misses the ball, really. Doesn't really header it. And he's facing towards his goalkeeper. And obviously, the goalkeeper then does, does win it. Um, so the other things we're focusing on, as, as last week we talked about that starting position. Uh, has he got his front foot forward? Um, as you can see, the time of the game, the, the, the situation Man City are in, they're 2-0 up. The other team are down to 10 men. Uh, I don't think Arsenal had one shot at goal in the whole game. So maybe the keeper's thinking, oh, I might want to try and do something here myself to get myself involved in the game. Um, so there's loads of little factors that, that, we, um, that we can touch on. But I just want to get you... Have we lost Sam there? We have. Sorry, mate. I'm here. I'm just my... My signal is rubbish here, isn't it? So yeah, guys, just getting your getting your thoughts involved in the in this situation if we can.
education issue, but what's this? What's the play from a social pretend from the social development phase of what that goalkeeper now might need to do? Rowan, I'm going to pick on you. Well, I well, I know that, like there's a social part, and I don't know. I think he should have because the keepers are the leaders on the field. And I think he should have went to go check. You know what I mean? Even if they're even if they're not as close as what he might be with another defender, I still think he should have checked on his own player mm -hmm. from that aspect. But, what about even like the next day or the next two two days later, they see each other in the locker room? Like what what's going on there? Is there tension? How do you rectify that? And and what do you say to that teammate if you're that goalkeeper? Hannah, I'm gonna ask that question to you. I was just like apologize because I mean, well, I mean, I would apologize, but yet again, they shouldn't have been there because 